In this video, we're going to look at the definition of a derivative. And so this, this definition of a derivative is actually a function. And you'll notice that it's the same formula that we, have that we used in the last video. And instead of having a specific value of c, we have the generic x. So we have f of x plus h minus f of x over h. Um, so this is the derivative of f with respect to x. The domain of this function consists of all x in the domain of the original function f for which this limit exists. Uh, where f prime of c represents the slope of the curve at one value only, f prime of x is a slope generating formula and can be used to find the slopes of a curve at multiple values of x. And so there are times when all we, all we need to do is just find the derivative at a value, one value, that's fine. But if you want to evaluate a function in more than one place, it is better to find the formula. And so we'll start off by writing the definition of a derivative. Okay, we want the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. And so what we'd like to do first, and I, I suggest that you do this off to the side, is to find f of x plus h, and that happens to be x plus h cubed. Okay, I'm going to leave it up to you to do that out the long way and understand where I got this, but f of x plus h is equal to, that is just representative of the f of x plus h. That's in my, numer in my numerator that's the f of x plus h, minus f of x, I want to subtract f of x, and f of x is just the x cubed, all over h. Now I did mention that when you use this definition of a derivative, that usually nice things happen, and you can see that the x cubes cancel out. And again, I'm left with every term in the numerator has an h in it so I can factor out the h, because that's my issue right now. If I try to plug in h equals 0, I'm going to get 0 over 0, which is indeterminate. So I'm going to factor out the h, and this is what it leaves me. And by the way, this should be 2xh squared. I didn't cut my squared down. So when I factor out the h, I, in the first term I'm left with 2x squared, the second term I'm left with xh, the third term I'm left with just x squared, the third term, uh, the fourth term here, I'm getting 2xh, and then the last term, I just get an x squared. And so when I actually evaluate this, if I substitute in 0, the, so the h's will cancel, and I can now substitute in 0 for anywhere I see an h. So this is going to 0, this is going to 0, and this is going to 0. And then combining those, I get 3x squared. So what I've just come up with here, all this work, um, has basically given me a formula. And this is actually the derivative. So f prime of x is equal to 3x squared if f of x equals x cubed. So our original function is x cubed. The derivative of that function is f prime of x which is 3x squared. Again, those of you in physics already know the shortcut to this, but you have to learn the long way in a calculus course. We will eventually get to the shortcuts, and, and that will be soon, um, but you need to demonstrate that you know how to use this uh, definition of a derivative. So now I have a formula that will help me generate slopes of, slopes of tangent lines at any value of x that is in the domain of this function. And so if I wanted to find f prime of 1, meaning the slope of the tangent line at 1, I would just plug in 1 into the derivative function and I would get 3. Now, so in the first video we found the slope of the of f of x equals x cubed at 1, the slope of the tangent line, and we found that the answer was 3. And we did that by plugging 1 into the formula. Now what we've done, we used x in our derivative formula, and we came up with, that, with a formula for the slope, and we plugged the 1 in, we got the same exact value. 
But now in this case, now that I have a formula, I can also find f prime of 0 by plugging that in. I get 3 times 0 squared, which is equal to 0. All right, so now that we know the slope of the tangent line is 3 at x equals 1, we can now find the equation of a tangent line. So if you look at Roman numeral 3, writing the equation of a tangent line, it says, in general, if f is differentiable at x equals c, the word differentiable means that the function, that you can find the derivative, or that the derivative is defined at x equals c. Um, so if f is differentiable at x equals c, the tangent to y equals f of x at c passes through the point c f of c, right? That is just the point of tangency and can be written in point slope form. So let's, when we're asked to write the equation of the tangent line to the curve, x cubed at x equals 1, two things that we need. We need the slope and we need an ordered pair. So to find m, we want f prime. And so we want the slope at x equals 1, so we're going to find f prime of 1. Well, we know f prime of 1 is equal to 3. The other thing that we need is f of 1, right? So f prime of 1 is just the slope of the tangent line. f of 1 is you're looking for the y value on the original curve. And so when you plug 1 in there, you get 1. So I have m is equal to 3. I have an ordered pair, 1, 1. And I want to find the slope of the tangent line. I use the formula y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So y minus 1 equals my slope 3 times x minus 1. Now sometimes it's appropriate to leave your equation in this form. I'm going to ask you to, for now, to put this in slope intercept form. So we'd have y equals 3x, we'd have minus 3, and then we'd have to add that 1 back on. So we have y equals 3x minus 2. So here is the slope, uh, excuse me, the equation of my tangent line. This is the original function, f of x. What I'd like to do is graph them both on the calculator and show you um, how that this is, in fact, the tangent line you can visualize that. So let's graph y equals x cubed in the y1, or we'll enter x cubed in the y1, and then in y2, we'll put the the equation for the tangent line. So we've got the original function and now we have the slope of uh, the equation of the tangent line. Let's graph them both just in a standard window. Here's my original function and here comes the tangent line. And so I know that the point of tangency for this problem is 1. So I'm going to trace on 1, hit enter, and I'm going to zoom in so you can see this. Zoom in, hit enter. And you can get a better idea of that point of tangency right here. I'm going to hit trace on one again and hit enter and I'm going to zoom in one more time. I may zoom in again in a minute, but let's zoom in one more time right now. There's my original curve and here comes a tangent line. So something you'll notice is when you zoom in on a curve or you zoom in on a function at a particular point, if that function is differentiable at that point, the curve will start to look like the tangent line. And so it basically behaves like the tangent line. And so I'm going to trace one more time on 1, and I'm going to zoom in one more time. So there's the curve, which almost looks like a, a straight line right now, and here comes the tangent line. So we have zoomed in so much. Um, what we're showing here is that the curve itself, um, again, is behaving like the tangent line, and this is in that we say that the slope of the tangent line is also the slope of the curve at that value. In the next video, I'm going to have you um, practice a few problems and I will I'll summarize um, what we've done so far.